We're having a couple things that I've never had before. One of them is an antelope. Yeah. Lagos, Nigeria's most packed population center, is a city of contrast, home to the very poor, like those inhabiting Africa's biggest floating village, Makoko. I feel like we're in Venice. You know Venice? <laughs> but nearby, Victoria Island is home to some of Nigeria's over 29,000 millionaires. What kind of food are you guys serving here? So we're authentic Nigerian with a modern twist. 95% of the ingredients we use are locally sourced, and then we only bring in things like truffle, you know, fagua, things like that, obviously not available here in the market. Today, as we wrap up our Nigeria series, I want to see and experience the classics, food that Nigerian folks eat every day, from the mainstream and affordable, <laughs> to high-end Nigerian five-star dining like you have never seen before. Wow. This is traditional food of Nigeria at every level. Time to eat. Okay, let's check out all this food. I'm very excited. Yeah, I'm hungry. First of all, what? What's going on here? Is everything okay? Oh. Why did they give us so much? <laughs> So this is the jollof, right? Yeah. Do you know what? On Instagram, they have like kind of a war. It's called a jollof war. We had different people from different African countries come together mm. and make jollof. Because then it's just like, who makes the best rice? Yeah. But you have to promise me. Once you try this, you can try Ghana jollof. I'm sorry. You have to be loyal to one side. How could I just be ignorant to the rice in Ghana? You're not being ignorant. I'm telling you, you don't want to try it. I think right now you're being a great ambassador to Nigeria, but not so much to Africa as a whole. Oh my God, <laughs> wait. I'm just joking. <laughs> They use long grain rice, locally grown with a sweet taste. It's cooked with a mixture of oil, tomato paste, onion, and red chili peppers. The secret is to cook it until the rice absorbs all the sauce. Well, I'm gonna go straight up. Like, how could you want to try anything else? Spicy, but it's got a very smoky flavor to it. Is that a plantain? No. Wow, that's very good. A little bit of tomato, and then just like a complex smokiness to it. I love that. If they don't do it good, it's not smoky. Do you know how this place got the name White House? No. So the lady got a place, it was in front of the White House. So when she's trying to explain to people how to get here. Oh, I love that. I've seen so many restaurants like that around the world, like, we were just in Myanmar, and there's a restaurant that doesn't want to pay taxes. So it's like the restaurant across from the temple. That's the name of the restaurant, because they don't officially exist. And if you don't exist, you don't have to pay taxes. I wish I didn't exist. People tell me just to move on. Welcome to White House. It's a cultural melting pot and a social hub where groups and solo patrons keep coming back for more. A place like this, they call it Buka. Multicultural, delicious food at affordable prices. Right now, Razak will help me understand why White House became what it is today. Can you talk about the history of this place? How long has it been here? Okay. Wow, bravo, 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 bravo. White House. Ah, it's a great. That's great. We are out for 28 years now. Wow. 28, how long? 28, 28 years. We start here just oh, in a, just a garden, very small place. We have become saying you eat and what you live immediately. Mm -hmm. So when things are becoming good and the gravel, people come in. Once they come in, they relax. Mm -hmm. Sit, eat, relax. Street food is well suited to those on a budget. Five star dining is food for the financially able. Buka is the great class leveler. It's everything in between. A cow, four goats on Sunday. Gone. Finish. One cow, four goats. Oh, gone. Finish. Whoa. What do people like the most? Uh, I cannot say people like this, people like this. People like everything we prepare here. People love it very well. You know, I'm doing something called business enlargement. Sometimes we do something, okay, we'll give you something free for today. Tomorrow you will come. When you come tomorrow, tomorrow is not free. Yeah. I see people coming in, they're lining up, the food is all spread out. How does it work? Thank you very much. Yeah. <laughs> Once people come in, you line up, you wait for your time. Once you have your money with you, you make your hot dog, anything you want to make it. So free for yourself. That sounds great. Yeah. Yeah. I'm gonna do that pretty soon. Free yourself, free, free. 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 Wait, feel free? Free for free. Yeah. Ah, but but the price is also free? No. <laughs> oh no, that would be a bad business practice. <laughs> Our next dish, pounded yam. It's exactly what it sounds like. Boiled, then beaten with an elegant, synchronized brutality. 
The pounded yam, we pound by ourselves. The resulting consistency is outstanding. The more time you spend pounding, the better the food is. So it's like emphasizing on how good their food is. But the flavor is pretty plain by itself. Folks usually eat it with other food friends, like agusi, a thickened soup made with cow parts, melon seeds, and other vegetables. Quick question, why is this soup solid? It has vegetables in it. Soup to me is a little more uh, soupy. I know, you know what? When I first went outside of Nigeria, I thought they would taste soup and I would see like liquid and I'm like, what is the actual soup? Uh, 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 oh, I like that. I like the hand feel. I feel like I can taste it with my fingertips before it even gets to my mouth. Boom. Oh. That's really good. Also spicy, yeah. but well seasoned, but it's like a solid puree of a few different ingredients almost. Oh. Cow skin. This could have been one of your Chanel purses, but instead we're gonna eat it. Yeah, so much better. The taste, it's super gummy, also smoky. No, this is my favorite part. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. Everything's red. Everything is the color of heartburn and anger. Ooh, it's orange, the color of the sun and light. Mm, and life, yeah, and blood. Are you colorblind? Buka is not hard to find in Nigeria, but White House's commitment to consistency and quality has made it stand out for years. From a classic icon, we're headed to the new kid on the block. Boom, sir. You're Thank welcome you so much. For you. Without years of reputation to lean on, how does a new restaurateur lure in and keep customers in Lagos? First of all, I gotta say, these are some of the hardest women I've ever seen Thank in my you life. So much. This is like 45, 50 degrees. Opened just over a year ago, the Yakoya Abula joint quickly became one of the most popular buka spots in town. They also have a unique casino-style operating method using tokens. You buy your chips, yeah, and we'll, you spend your chips. We'll fill out the best method we can use. So once you're done, and you're still left with our chips, you go back there to collect back your Nigerian currency. In your restaurant, yeah. only one person ever touches the money. Which is the cashier. As someone who eats at a lot of restaurants, what are the things you like to see when you go to a restaurant? Oh, I think the rich and the poor can dine together mm. and eat as one. Not that I'll go into a restaurant I can't be able to afford it. Giving them the best, giving them the good food, giving them the cheap food. What is your best-selling item? Amala, which is being sold out already. We do it every five, five minutes. Amala similar to pounded yam, but with different ingredients. Using black yam flour, mix it with hot water until it becomes sticky and brownish. This is what everyone comes for. Yeah, it smells amazing, and it's so much effort and work that goes into it. Is that all over Legos? Yeah, yeah. people love it. Serve it with a dish called uwerdu, made of palm oil, onion, tomato, red chili peppers, and finally, goat meat. What is going on with these portions? This, I <laughs> and get like a giant meal. That's why it's really popular because the food is affordable and it's really good. Do you think, are people in Nigeria, or people in Lagos, are they eating a meal like this three times a day? Possibly, yeah. In my house, we eat a meal like this every night. Should we try eating this? Yes, we should. All right. Oh, f oh. <laughs> oh sh it's good. Let me try it. <laughs> wow, I'm actually blown away. Do you know, I've never tried their amala, but like completely, wow. That's tasty. On top of that, he's got soup and stuff. All of it together tastes amazing. It's delicious. It's so good. It's kind of like a thick soup with mashed potato kind of texture, but even softer than the mashed potato. And then the flavor itself, super spicy and savory in a way that just feels like comforting. Like it warms you up from the inside. Yeah. Um, also, what's this? He says it's a lap. He said lamb. Yeah. A lap, lamb, what the? Lap. Lap. Lap? Thighs. Oh, <laughs> you're saying lap. Yeah, like a laptop. Okay. Nice. Woo. What do you think? I think it's hot. It's. Wow. On camera, not on camera. This is crazy good. I'm, it's I'm crazy surprised. good. It's super soft and meaty. The fat's just kind of melted down. It's really soft. Holy sh! It's not going that well. Oh, look at you. No, you're showing the wrong hand. Now I know your trick. Mm -hmm. oh, I'm sipping. Well,
hello. Hello. First of all, thank you for thinking I have enough hair to warrant a hairnet. Yeah. Do I need to really wear this? You'll be all right. Ile Eros. Yes. You are Eros. I am Eros. This is House of Eros. Correct. Meet Tolu Uragbobo, also known as Chef Eros, named after the Greek god of love. He's the man who knows what billionaires eat for lunch. He went to London to study international business management. That's where he found his life's passion and obsession. Food. How'd you learn to cook? Cooking for me is a gift. Some people can sing, some people can act. I can cook. I can think something in my head and put it together on a plate and it comes out just as I thought. After spending years learning from other chefs and even cooking for the likes of France's president, Eros moved back to Lagos and opened one of the first chef-owned gourmet Nigerian restaurants, serving traditional food with a culinary twist. Which is more useful for a restaurant entrepreneur, like study cooking and then try to start a business or? Study business and try and figure out the yeah. business you go. I think there's a lot of people out there who are like, I'm passionate about cooking and about food, and then they get way in over their head when they realize, I mean, running a restaurant is complicated business. It is very complicated. So many moving parts, so many elements, about timing, everything. It's so complicated. Right. I think that's a great piece of advice, though. If you want to start a restaurant, at maybe... least take a business course. If you don't have that business acumen, you don't have that knowledge of business, it's going to be really hard. Except you do get a partner who is the business person, and then you're the chef, and then you balance yourself out. Are you both? I am both. For dinner, we're going to try three different courses from the chef's tasting menu, including this creature, the guinea fowl. But first, rice. One, two. Wait. What? No. Oh. What? You're acting like my dog died. <laughs> it's your trademark. Guys, I'm being fancy. I'm not wearing my handkerchief upon my head. Right. And to that I say cheers. Cheers. Aww. Let me introduce you to my friend, Miss World Africa. Hi, nice I'm Africa. Nice to meet you. My name is Eros. Nice to meet you. They met before we started filming, actually. <laughs> This is the first that we're gonna try tonight. It's a take on a local rice called Ofada. Ooh. Ofada is like the local wild rice, very perfumed flavor. Some people like it, some people don't. But what we've done with this is we've tossed it in a coconut corn cream and we've also added some corn into that. We've layered it with tozo. Tozo is a really fatty cut of beef, which has like great marbling. I use the drippings from the tozo to make a pepper sauce. And then we've served it inside of the shell of a coconut. Again. You know what, he said everything so nicely. I don't, I don't even want to listen to him no more. I just want to eat. All right, let's try, let's All right, try let's it out. Go. That's fantastic. Kind of like a, um... No, I think I'm crying. You're gonna cry? That's how good I'm, I'm You're crying. Talking. Yeah, I am. I think we could do another viral moment right now. Yeah. Oh, that's fantastic. When you moved out and then came back after so long, what did you see about your country that you hadn't realized before? I started to appreciate our food even more because I missed Nigerian food. I missed mm. the complexity of the flavor. I missed the depth of a lot of the things that we cook. I also missed the spiciness of a lot of our food. But I, mean, I saw a lot of growth in the space that I was away. Lagos in particular had grown tremendously in terms of the amount of people who had moved in and the number of new places that had opened. And I sort of wanted to join that movement is why I decided to start the restaurant, going down the restaurant route. I feel like we really value each other's presence. I mean, sometimes people say that we don't really worry our cut up, but one thing I know for sure is when I came back here, the kind of reception that I got here is different from anywhere else in the world. It might be loud at somewhere else, but the way I feel inside is so much... It in just feels heart. like... Yeah. Oh. Yes. Yeah, there's and usually so just special. one place that can really make you feel that yes. way. Course two, masa, a rice cake fried in butter with suya pepper on top, paired with something I've seen in Nigeria but never tried before, antelope. All we do is toss it in butter, rosemary, and garlic and that's it. We serve the antelope with a antelope reduction and chocolate. So it's chocolate oh, and antelope reduction. Nice. So in my head, right, when an, an antelope is killed, it's usually like hung to dry out. So this is basically like my interpretation of a hanging antelope or in a tree. And oh, cry now. Are you okay? What's happening? <laughs> 
Can you're you hungry? When it's just... <laughs> you need to get the antelope off the tree. Like that. Coat that in the chocolate. Okay. We take a bite. Oh, it's so delicious. That's nice. The that antelope, you know, it has a little bit of an organ meat flavor to it. Like, it's almost a little livery. It's super lean, too, right? Yep. And the rice cake tastes a little bit fried with peanut dust or something on there. So good. A little bit more chocolate. Do you know what part of the antelope is? These are all parts of the antelope. And the bones, and then that's what we use to make the chocolate. Okay, that weird looking bird that I saw earlier, it's right there. And this beautiful. plate. So that bird has been seasoned and salted. It's cooked in a sauce called ayamashi. It's basically like a habanero sauce. Served with a pounded yam puree. Oh. Finished up with that sauce, the ayamashi. And that is the rest of the guinea fowl that put into a meat grinder. It's basically formed into a croquette. Enjoy. It's really spicy too. Oh, fantastic. We had All some right. pounded yam earlier. They gave us like two kgs of it in a bowl. <laughs> yeah. So. And they were like, eat you animals. I like to have this with a fork and spoon. A fucking spoon. Is that what you said? Fork and spoon. So I use the spoon. <laughs> That is how you pound a yam. <laughs> Super smooth. That's the first thing I noticed. And then, oh, a strong peppery flavor. And that meat, oh, it's not that much fat on it either, I would say, right? Yep. But it's not dry or anything. No, it sort of like breaks apart and then blends so nicely with the other ingredients here. Is there a reason, I guess because it's a tasting menu, is that why it's kind of small? Yeah, it's a tasting menu. You're supposed to go through seven courses and be able to get to the end. Right, and the ball. You have a gift, my friend. That's outstanding. How do I describe it? It's just good. Guys, just come here and you eat it and figure it out. Describe it to yourself. And what do you think? I think that this is the only place I want to eat for the rest of my life. It's a whole experience. There's no way to sum up Lagos or Nigeria. Whatever bits and pieces of this culture you bump into during your time here will become your reality. One of the big reasons I wanted to come here is so far in this series, we've shown a lot of food from places like Makoko. No. <laughs> and oftentimes when I go to countries, people feel disappointed that we don't show like higher end food because it exists. You know, whatever people see becomes their reality. And so this is to kind of balance out our coverage of this place. As a filmmaker, it's the hardest, yet most rewarding country I've ever visited. I travel to be challenged, to immerse myself in different, unfathomable ways of life unlike anything I'm familiar with. But if there is one takeaway that I can hold to be a universal truth, it's that this city is not for the weak. Even though things are bad here in our country, I'm so confident in our people. I know that we don't yeah, practically yeah, yeah, like people are so willing to push through. We have so much talent. It's such a beautiful country. It's so colorful. It's yeah. full of so much flavor and depth and the people love each other, you know. I've never had as much fun as I've had in Nigeria. Nigeria. In my nowhere. There's no place ever. It's like a mix of the two. It's like I have the worst time and the best time in Nigeria. Amen. Hey guys, how's it going with that quarantine? More like quarantine, mm. am I right? Mm. If you're anything like me, you're probably stuffing yourself twice a day. Listen, we're gonna get through this. I'm not talking about the apocalypse, I don't know anything about that. I'm talking about this constant stomach stretching that we keep doing, but if we move forward, if we persevere, at the end of the day, we can call ourselves food coma survivors. Buy the shirt. And we're donating 25% of the profits from this campaign to Feed America's COVID-19 response fund. They are assisting food banks and helping people across America who are in need. So, it's a cool shirt, it's a great cause. Thank you guys for the support. And be sure to check out our second channel, More Best Ever Food Review Show, for raw clips and deleted scenes that didn't make it into the show. Guys, thank you so much to my wonderful host, Nakashi. Uh, I'd like to shake you. This is definitely the most beautiful couple of days of this year.
here and I've learned so much about my country, myself, and I'm actually quite hurt that it's ending. And I loved waking up every time in the morning to get where we need to be. I'm so grateful. Thank you so much. This is a blessing for me and it's a lesson that I will take for the rest of my life. Thank you. Thanks so much oh, for watching. We'll see you yeah. next time. Goodbye. Oh, peace. <laughs>